from Jerusalem. To talk about it is Yaakov Katz. He's a senior columnist and editor for the Jerusalem Post and the paper's former editor-in-chief. Sir, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Um, Prime Minister Netanyahu is under pressure on multiple fronts, including pressure from the U.S. President Joe Biden and his administration have been pressing him to minimize civilian casualties. Will this move Mr. Netanyahu to de-escalate? Well, Christy, we're talking as uh, National Security Advisor for President Joe Biden in Israel, Jake Sullivan, held meetings just yesterday with the Prime Minister, <clears throat> excuse me, and with other top senior government officials and defense officials. And basically what we're hearing is that the Americans, and I think it's no secret already, we've heard the comments made by the Vice President, the Secretary of State, the Secretary of Defense, and even the President himself would like to see Israel de-escalate, I would call it from the high intensity conflict stage, which we're in now to a more lower or a lower intensity conflict stage, which we've yet to arrive at. And they are looking to see that Israel kind of wrap up this high intensity stage in the next few weeks. I'm not sure that the prime minister will heed that advice because there is a benefit to him potentially politically mm. to stand up, to be appearing as standing up strong to pressure from outside of Israel. Yeah, that's right. He's facing this intense domestic pressure inside Israel. Netanyahu is struggling for his political future. He's been trailing behind in the polls. Um, hostage families are losing patience with him. So how is he handling all that domestic pressure that's building up? I don't envy the prime minister and the challenges that he's facing and all of these conflicting sometimes interests and goals, right? One of the main goals, obviously the primary goal of this war is to degrade Hamas's capabilities, to bring it down from leadership over Gaza and prevent it from ever being able to threaten Israel again in the future. At the same time, we have about 130 Israeli hostages who are still being held inside the Gaza Strip mm. by Hamas. Sometimes mm. those two objectives, and how do we get them back, those two objectives at times might appear to contradict one another. But what we have to remember, like you said, Christy, is the prime minister trailing in the polls, losing support. He wants to shore up that support because the assumption in, in the political system here is that there will be an election uh, highly likely in the aftermath of when this conflict ends. And for him to climb back up, he needs to appear to be strong. He needs to regain that position of the Mr. Security, Mr. Uh, I can take care of America, I can uh, run the country without hesitation. Mm -hmm. And right now, people don't see that. One of the ways to potentially do that is to stand up to U.S. and international pressure. And my fear is that this could lead us to an unnecessary crisis with the Americans, right? We've seen how Joe Biden has, fair, for the most part, stood up strong alongside Israel, made a historic visit to Israel, has supplied Israel with the munitions and, and supplies and equipments that it needs, is pushing through Congress a $14 billion aid package for Israel, has not called for a comprehensive ceasefire like some other world leaders have called for, and, and on the contrary, has said, I don't want Israel to stop. Israel needs to take out Hamas because they have no right to continue to exist after the horrific attacks of October 7th. We don't need a crisis with the Americans right now, and mm -hmm. I would hope that politics don't get in the way. Yeah, and so in the face of mounting domestic pressure, international pressure, are you saying that ultimately it's the domestic pressure that will guide and direct Mr. Netanyahu during these next few critical weeks? And so what will that mean for the, his campaign against Hamas? How will that take shape? You know, Christy, it was the late Henry Kissinger who just uh, passed away, what, just about two weeks ago, who once coined the phrase, I'm paraphrasing here for a moment, that Israel doesn't have foreign policy, it only has domestic policy. And uh, I think that at the end of the day, like all good politicians, that they before they look what's happening across the Atlantic, they look what's happening in their own backyard, and they want to make sure that they can remain in office. So. Uh, this is going to be a continued question and cloud that will over, uh, will hover above the decision-making apparatus that's making these decisions throughout the conflict and the war. Let's also just throw into the mix, Christy, is the fact that there are mounting calls for many of the, the leaders, it, not only on the security side, but also on the political side, to step down in the aftermath of the mm. uh, intelligence debacle and the massive failure that led to those Hamas attacks on October 7th. And those include calls on Netanyahu to step down. So this really mm. will, for him, will be a fight for survival in the day after uh, this conflict ends.
Yaakov Kass joining us live from Jerusalem. We thank you for your analysis. You. Take care. Now, eight people.